Classically, metal-rich waters will be found in three places. First up, natural sources. Rocks and soils on weathering can release metals into the water. Shales can release aluminium. Terrace gravels, heavy orange-brown staining in colour, can release iron. Secondly, industrial sources. Steel manufacture, galvanising, electroplating can all be associated with metals. Surprisingly, even the manufacture of paint. Thirdly, mining. Coal mines and metal mines, when they're abandoned, can become flooded, flushing out a variety of metals into the water phase. Metal-rich waters can have an adverse impact on the environment. Dissolved metals are toxic to fish, they can be phytotoxic to plants. An increase in metal concentration in a waterway reduces the biodiversity. Precipitation of the metals causes the settled solids to coat the base of the river, smothering plants, benthic invertebrate species and fish eggs. In association with the precipitation of the metals, the pH of the water may decrease, becoming acidic. This drop in pH may reduce biodiversity, decreasing the number of species that can be supported. Lowering the pH also increases the ability of a range of metals to dissolve increasing both the concentration and the range of metals which may be present in the water. Waters containing dissolved metals may be crystal clear, but don't be fooled, lurking inside could be large concentration of dissolved metals. To treat dissolved metal rich waters, there are three stages. Stage one requires the establishment of the right pH and EH conditions, promoting the precipitation of the dissolved metals. Frequently, Metal-rich waters may have a low acidic pH. Adding of an alkali raises the pH, causing the metals to precipitate. The optimum pH to achieve is that which gives the lowest concentration of dissolved metals. In this example, the iron initially precipitates out as iron 2-hydroxide, a greenish-blue precipitant. On shaking the bottle, oxygen trapped within the water oxidizes the iron to iron 3-hydroxide giving the classic rusty brown colour so typical of coal mine water. Stage 2, the separating the liquid phase from the solids. The precipitated metals form small flocks which with time will settle out of suspension leaving a metal free water phase. To aid settlement of the flocks a flocculant may be added to stick the small flocks together into larger more rapidly settling solids. The larger flocks rapidly settle to the base of the bottle. Stage 3, sludge dewatering. The sludge produced may contain a significant proportion of water. Dewatering of the sludge reduces both the mass of the sludge and the volume that it occupies, reducing waste disposal costs. Where possible, options for recovering the metals out of the sludge need to be explored, enabling the sludge to enter the circular economy.